Hey guys, I just discovered that I only edited half of this video in February 2018 and forgot all about it. It's October 2020 now and I will include most of the original edit and add a little bit more footage at the end of this video to make it more complete. Hey guys, today I'm going to do a little unboxing and a little testing with this uh, TP-Link 8 port gigabit easy smart switch. And the model is TL-SG108E. So normally I use um, these uh, little Cisco switches here. And these are great because they allow me to uh, basically use all the features of the SG200 series. But in, a small, but in a small form factor. So it's a lot easier to capture on camera. So 8 ports. But everything I do on this 8 port can be applied to the 18 port or the 26 port it all basically works the same way but some of you commented that uh, these can be a little expensive uh, for for personal or home use so what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna try and uh, use uh, this switch which is uh, basically half or less than half the price of the uh, Cisco switch there so it's kinda hard to see on camera but uh, it's a business solution and it uh, has QS, VLAN, IGMP, snooping, uh, steel housing, and green tech. Let's take a look at the uh, bottom here. So it's 8 ports gigabit. Anyway, it's a nice shiny box, but uh, let's see what's inside. Okay, that's that's a little better on camera. So we got ourselves a, a little installation guide. A little CD. I guess it might have the documentation or some kind of setup software we'll see technical support info uh, lots of contact numbers across the world so this is a good indication because you could probably get this pretty much anywhere and a fold-out installation guide And we have the specs right here, so that might be easier to read than the what was actually on the box. Alright. And there's a FAC here. Let's go through that. Alright, I think that's, that's good enough. Let's get to the uh, real stuff here. Okay, let's just put this down. Let's see if there's anything else inside the box. So we have this little tiny AC adapter. Alright. We have the uh, little rubber feet. and that's all that comes in the box and our main switch here pull it out of the plastic and here we go so eight ports little power LED little reset uh, pinhole there
All right, just for fun, let's uh, open it up and see what's inside. All right, so it just slides out. And that's it. There's there's not much in there. Highlights up here, so we got the uh, power LED just going straight away, and we see the other LEDs all go on at the same time. That's good, and uh, I don't think anything else is going to happen. So until we actually plug in something, so I'm just going to plug this in, which leads to the uh, other switch I was just showing you, just to. There we go, we got a little LED activity. You can configure the switch with the built-in web GUI. Login as admin and password is admin. Once you log in, you can see the standard configuration options. You can change the IP address of the switch or set it to DHCP. There are various options to change the port settings and even cable test. More on this later. The feature I'm most interested in are the VLAN configuration options. It looks like this switch has three different ways to configure VLANs. I will not get into any VLAN configuration in this video, but I will dedicate a future video on just testing and using these features. There is also a loopback prevention feature which is disabled by default. I will demonstrate this later as well. There are also various functions that this switch provides and I will probably go into these in future videos. I have updated the firmware to the latest version available. Usually these small switches never have a recent firmware version installed coming out of the box. This is a good reason to install the latest as it fixes known issues and also fixes any security problems that may have been discovered. In addition to the web GUI, there is also a Windows application that allows you to configure the switch and it's probably a little easier for novice users. The look is very similar to the web GUI, but for setting IP address and updating the firmware, the Windows application might be a better choice if you're not familiar with configuring switches. Alright, let's test the loop prevention feature. In a non-managed switch, if you create a loop, it will render your switch useless. This sometimes happens by accident when someone accidentally plugs a loose cable back into the switch. This feature can prevent your switch from freezing and becoming useless. So when you see a fast blinking pattern like this, it usually means you have a loop on your switch. Let's enable the loop prevention and see what happens. So this time instead of green LEDs blinking quickly, we have a slow blinking amber and green LED where we have created the loop problem. Okay, let's move on to cable testing. This is a feature I see in some Cisco switches. I have yet to see this feature actually find a bad cable. What usually happens when there is a bad cable, the device attached to it will not work properly, or the speed will drop to from gigabit to 100 megabit or even 10 megabit. If your gigabit device is not operating at the fastest speed that your switch is capable of, it probably means you have a bad cable. The easiest way to test this feature is to create a bad cable. We can start by damaging a few of the smaller wire strands located inside the cable jacket. 
And after cutting one, two, three, and even four strands, this switch was not able to detect that this cable was now damaged. So I don't think this feature actually works. The only thing the cable test can detect is if the other end of the cable is plugged into a device by indicating normal or open. And that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.